Hello, and welcome to episode 9 of my Better Than Wolves Let's Play. Lovely sunny day. So the plan is now, quickly build my nether portal. I might tuck it away around the back here. And um, get down the old nether. And return victorious with some netherrack. Uh, I'm not really fussed where I pull it, it's not going to be anything fancy. I'll put it here. Um, I'm always paranoid that I'm accidentally going to um, put a bit of obsidian in the wrong place. And it takes ages to remove it again, so I like just to mark out the middle of the portal to avoid any accidents. Um, and I know you don't have to put the corners in of the portal, it still works, but. Well, you can remove them, I think, once you've made the portal or something, I don't know. But I like it. There we go. So let's quickly grab a flint and tinder. Um, I will set up a nether base eventually. And it'll be um, cool and everything, but I'm not planning on doing that for a little while. So I, um, I'll just... Yeah. I'll, I won't take my diamond pickaxe just in case anything happens, but I shouldn't die. <laughs> so I'll, um, I'm not going to take. I'm not going to empty out my inventory. I'm just going to run in and I'm sure I'll survive. Let's take my trusty flint and steel. And let's quickly grab some netherrack. I only need nine bits of the netherrack. Voila. To build my stewing pot. Um, well, technically I only need one. But the more heat you apply to your stewing pot, the faster it stews whatever's inside, up to a maximum of nine. Right, here we go. Uh, nice open place. There's a ghast there. Uh, the portal's slightly in the netherrack. So I am just going to do a grab and run. Let's clear out the surrounding area a bit. Eventually I will be... Oh, excuse me. My phone is ringing. Back in a sec. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, like I said, very quick excursion into the pits of hell. But we've got what we needed, our netherrack. So um, I'm guessing I might have my fire pit just just here. Um, it's not going to be made out of anything fancy. I'll just quickly throw it together and I'll... Uh, Return when it's done. So there we have it. It's my fire pit. So I've just got nine bits of netherrack at the bottom, all alight. And I've just. These are two axles holding up the stewing pot. You don't need that. It could have the stewing pot just floating in empty space, but it's just for aesthetic reasons. So now this is a heated stewing pot. And it's heated the best a stewing pot can be. Um, it, yeah, it recognises a 3x3 three three grid underneath. And later on, I get the capability of building bellows, and they can stoke the fire, and the flames will come up higher. And that will turn the stewing pot into like a rendering pot. And that's for some more complicated applications. So what I can do now is, if I take an egg, and place it in my stewing pot like so, as you can see, stewing pot is cooking away and it will turn my egg into a boiled egg, hard boiled egg. So now I can use this as a source of food. Not bad. And the way the stewing pot works is I can place, place in these eggs and the meat and the chicken and the pork and now this will all just slowly cook. So I can wander off on my adventures, come back, and it's all cooked. And I haven't used any coal, and I haven't had to stand there swapping in the different types of meat. And, um, yeah, it's a great time saver. But the most important use for the stewing pot is going to be with the dung. In, render in um, tanning... I'll keep my eggs on me, I guess. Tanning my leather. So earlier, I um, got some leather from my cows, and I placed it in the millstones in my windmill and that produced
produces scoured leather. So this leather's kind of been scraped and cleaned up. So now, let me just see if my wolves have... Oh, another one's made a bit of dung. I'm not sure which one, so I'll... Uh, I won't feed them both yet. So I've got six bits of dung. So apparently if I place a piece of dung in here with my leather, it will tan the leather. And I'm guessing it's going to use one bit of dung for each bit of leather. And I can't just tan the whole lot. Yeah. So with this I'm going to be able to produce another five bits of tanned leather. But I think for what I need now, I only need one bit. So if I take this tanned leather, I can turn it into eight leather straps. Uh, I think if I arrange it like so, I get a leather belt. And then I think I've got everything I need now to make my saw blade. I think it's just iron, a leather belt, and some gears. So I just need to grab some iron and my gears. I um, haven't got any gears left over apparently. Exciting. And arrange it like so. Got my gears, got my iron, got my wood, and the all important leather belt. And there we go, we have a saw. Getting somewhere now. So, what I need to do now is take my saw, place it somewhere, uh, power it with mechanical power which I might do just uh, in this room, do you think? Or shall we build a separate workshop? I'll have to route the power to it somehow. I think we might be able to squeeze it in here. I just might have to do a bit of a rearrange. Because I'm not sure how the saw works, if it's good to have it up against a wall, or if it's best to have it with space around like that. So um, I'll do a bit of a think a bit of research and I'll come back to you hopefully with a working saw blade well I've um, decided to extend the old windmill as you can see it's got a second floor and I've um, added a few more switches so I'll quickly head up and turn on the windmill as a whole and I've added a few switches so if I want I can turn off the millstones. I don't want them banging away, but I do want them banging away at the moment because they are full of um, hemp. So my stewing pot's been cooking away, so as you can see, everything's cooked now. I've got a huge amount of hard boiled eggs and they stack up 64. All my steak and pork and chicken's all cooked. So that is brilliant. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, you know earlier you saw me putting the dung in with the scoured leather. Never ever put dung in with any cooked food because it instantly spoils all the food in the pot and it becomes foul food and um, I don't think there's a, a use for it at the moment because I think he used to be able to use it as fertiliser foul food but then it was um, deemed too easy to get because as you can see I could have a horrendous amount of fertiliser just from the, all the eggs very quickly very easily um, but I think it might have a use I'll have to look it up but nothing amazing but yeah, obviously the most important addition is going to be this saw blade. So I've got an on off switch for it because they are dangerous. If you touch that, it hurts. And you can use it to um, produce some interesting traps. So yeah, I've never done this before. This is all fresh for both of us. So apparently I just put a block that I want to cut here. So right click and place it there and this blade will have at it. So like so. So that produced four planks, which was what you would normally get if I was just to do it in my inventory. But as you can see, it's also producing this other material, which is sawdust. Now this does have its uses. Um, not 100% sure what they are. I know later on once I've got access to some other materials I can use the sawdust along with some paper and it produces I can use it to make dynamite and the dynamite itself isn't that useful but I can get lots of dynamite and shape it into something 
known as a mining charge, and then that can be used for mining. It's like TNT, but in a controlled explosion, it mines a 3x3 block out each time. But, um, so yeah, that's the saw in action. You can use this to cut any soft blocks, like wood and wool, stuff like that, but if you use stone or iron, apparently it'll break the, break the saw. So I'd have to build another one, so we're not going to be doing that anytime soon. So there we go, I've just hacked away my 64 bits of wood and got lots of planks and sawdust. Now, if I was to take some wooden planks and saw a wooden plank in half, I get two of these things, I think they're called sidings. So these can be used for aesthetic reasons, so I can place... They're like wooden slabs really, but they're not wooden slabs, they're sidings, and I think, yeah, I can place them like so. So this can open up a wide range of aesthetic uses, but the most important and exciting ones are obviously the ones that open up new opportunities in the Better Than Walls mod. So we'll just get some of those. Um, and then if I was to take these sidings, and saw these in half, you get these little bits and bobs, which are known as mouldings, and these, as well as having aesthetic purposes, so you can have, um, you know, like skirting boards, and have them going around, oh, I'm sure there's a way to get them going around the edges of your rooms, I should do it there, didn't I, yeah, like so. So you can give yourself like coving, and then if you saw these in half on the saw blade, you get these little corner pieces. Um, and I think can I place? No. Nah. Um, and I'm not sure if these have uses within the Better Than Walls mod other than aesthetics. If I wanted to pop them in the corner of all my rooms, I might just do that in this room because I can like so, and that kind of aesthetically pleasing, but if you then saw these in half, it gives you two gears. So um, so if you take that down, you get one plank of wood, it gives you two sidings, which will give you four mouldings, which gives you eight corners, which then give you sixteen gears, all from one plank of wood. So that is by far the most efficient way of getting gears now, is for me to use my saw. Um, so yeah, like I said, if I touch these, it does hurt. The armor's protecting me there. It should hurt a bit more than that. So you can make mob traps with these. If I was to plant a sapling here, and I had quite a few saw blades all going away, so you, and obviously add it off, once the tree's grown, I could then turn on the saw blades, and that will automatically cut down the tree into planks for me to harvest. Um, but the plan now is to use these new items I have available to create new machinery. So bear with me a sec. Right, um, I'm just going to turn this off because it's making a bit of a racket. Um, oh, it's also the stuff downstairs, isn't it? Thinking about it, all the hemp would have finished now, so we can just turn off the windmill. And like I said, in the latest version of Better Wolves, this banging sound's been replaced by something a bit less annoying, apparently. Um, Windmill going past the window, but yeah, if we take our new newly acquired pieces of wood, if you get two sidings, hmm, you turn them back into wooden planks, uh, two gears, a pressure plate, and a corner piece, which I annoyingly don't have because I turn them all into gears. So my bad. But yeah, what I can create is a hopper, and the hopper has many uses uh, in automation having things automatically set up to do things and collect items and filter items and so on but um, what we want it for is there we go, we can create a hopper and now I can use this hopper to do something a bit strange the hopper has many different 
filters that can be placed inside it and depending on what you put inside it depends on what it does so I'm just going to grab my hemp pad here pop it in here um, I might also keep all my saw blade related gubbins in here um, I guess I'll keep some gears in there great so yeah the hopper when it will accept items in the top of it like stewing pot but then if you supply it with mechanical power into the side for an axle it will then pump its contents into a chest or a stewing pot or whatever you fancy down at the bottom so that is my hopper I've just got it floating at the moment just because I wanted it off the ground um, and if I right click on it this is the hopper's inventory and this is where you can apply different filters to the hopper to gain different results depending on what you put into it so what we want to put into it is the most useful thing is this is the only way of creating hellfire dust which is something we need to move on up the ages of better than wolves and um, to make hellfire dust I have to purify ground netherrack through soul sand so I need to place soul sand as a filter and put ground netherrack through which sounds interesting so um, I'm gonna go create some ground netherrack so here's my netherrack that I acquired earlier and what I need to do is grind it up obviously so just need to oh, pop in my netherrack to my lovely millstones and get the power going I've got quite a bit of redstone now so I am thinking about adding a um, switch down here okay that was very scary so when you grind up netherrack into round netherrack it makes an horrific screaming noise oh my god I thought a ghast had like come through my portal somehow and was gonna destroy the village bloody hell but yeah I'm all about putting a switch down here and then having a line of redstone going up to the roof the, so I can turn it on when I enter which will make much more so that is horrific oh my god but um yeah the recipe did call for soul sand so I shall very quickly venture and get that I'll do it on camera just because there's a high chance I'm going to die and lose all my stuff as it falls into lava so it's always best to capture those horrific moments on tape so here we are back in the nether um, so soul sand soul sand soul sand soul sand I'm also going to need to gather some glowstone dust shortly soul sand oh don't kill me Mr. Ghast because um, we use the ground up not ground up sorry just the glowstone dust whatever it's called to produce a filament and I can use that filament oh it's over there wait that's gravel isn't it not soul sand anyway sorry um, but yeah you use the glowstone dust to create a filament and those filaments can be used to make light blocks which act like light bulbs can be turned on and off and that is another source of a light that can be used to grow hemp because you can use sunlight or the light blocks you can't use torches they don't they're not bright enough um, there is a decent supply of soul sand so we shall just quickly venture over there and gather that without plummeting to our deaths we seem to be quite lucky with the old ghast spawns at the moment and seem very safe but yeah another use for the filament is in the creation of something called a hibachi Hib uh, my pronunciation is most certainly wrong and um, what that is it is a controllable fire source um, I'm pretty sure I only need one bit of soul sand but I'll 
Oh my god, run for your life. Right, um, please don't kill me, I don't want to die. Uh, yeah, the Hibachi is a fire, like Netherrack, burns forever, but it can be turned on and off through the use of a redstone signal. And so that's useful, so I haven't got constantly fire burning away. But um, the main importance of it is that if you stoke the fire produced by a Hibachi, please, please, please don't kill me. Oh, you bastard! Did you see that? That was ah. Oh. Oh. Right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That was quality. That's hilarious. If you stoke the fire produced from Hibachi through the use of bellows, um, you can then turn your stewing pot into a rendering pot. So that's what the goal is. I need to um, create some bellows, have them poking through to the base of the fire, have them being pumped up and down uh, through the use of mechanical power that has to be alternated on and off using a redstone clock. Soul sand! So if we look through there, there's a soul sand filter, which I'm guessing is quite a fine filter. Um, we're going to stop trying to set fire to the windmill. We're going to right click on our stewing pot and uh, we're going to turn off this horrendous mess. I'm very conscious of time so this will be the very end of this video now. We'll just get our ground netherrack and turn it into hellfire dust I think is what I'm aiming for. Um, I'm hoping hoppers work without the aid of power so I think all I have to do is I know this is ugly but I'm just working this out as I go. I think I just have to throw it into the hopper and it should function like a hopper so should catch it oh it it's just turning it into it maybe because it's not got power it's not sucking it in oh holy shit there's a ghast um oh my god I have no idea what's going on Oh my god. Seriously, what? Why am I oh what? I don't I don't understand. Damn you better than wolves. So I'm guessing I was doing that incorrectly and I've angered the gods. So there there we have a ghast floating around my castle. <sighs> Seriously what? So obviously I'm not going to be able to kill that ghast, as I don't have a bow. I've got some arrows. I have the means to make a bow, but... That's back in my base, so obviously... What's the chance ghasts die in the daytime, do you think? Is that... well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I've never had a ghast. <laughs> oh no. So maybe the hoppers need to have mechanical power applied so that they don't get angry and spawn ghasts because that's I've never had a ghast in the in the mainlands before oh, creeper on creeper action there right so he seems to have floated off quite happily um I haven't managed to see what damage this caused yet hopefully it's just superficial uh, <laughs> so hopefully when I wake up he won't be there and it's all just a bad dream but um, if not, we'll get out there with a bow and arrow. So this episode now is going to definitely overrun. But thankfully, due to exciting, unforeseen circumstances. Oh, God. I can still hear him out there. He hasn't gone away. What was that noise? That's an Enderman as well. Just because why not, eh? Why not? Let's have Endermen. And I don't want to deal with you right now. Oh, I'm never. I'm not gonna be able to hit that, am I? Oh, for God's sake! My beautiful face. At least he didn't let all the cows loose. Imagine that. I've been right pissed. So he's up there being a douche. No. 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 I'm just what very wary of this fire. <laughs> wait, wait, hit it! Here we go, here we go, we've got to keep these fireballs away from the wood. 
<laughs> oh, he's all on fire. We'll put the wa oh, I put the water in the fire, so the water just got... Oh, my God. No! No, my beautiful face. <laughs> you love. Oh, you fucking... Fucking... Yeah, take that. Ugh. Yeah, bitch. Quick! Quick! <laughs> to the base! <laughs> Must quell the fire! Oh my god! Uh, uh, how the. Uh, no! My beautiful crops! No! Just piss off! Piss off! Stop it! No, 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 no. Let's check on the inside because I know fire does. Right, no one anywhere have I read anything about bloody gas appearing. Ah, oh. right. That's going to be the end of this episode. When I return, my base shall be as if none of this has happened, and I will have read through the wiki thoroughly to find out what is causing these ghasts to appear. Oh, thank you for watching. See you next time.